Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be doing a trying new makeup. I have just an influx of products that I'm actually super excited to use. So I thought we would do this and probably another one coming up because there's so many products. I wanna get back to first impression follow-ups, trying to figure out how to do that if I just decide on maybe like 10 or 20 products that are really kind of hyped. I don't know how to go about it because I'm trying so many products so quickly. We know the market is rolling fast. So I'm still trying to play around with that also because I haven't been posting as much um, I'm having a hard time and I feel like when I do film I'm like new 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 and that's what you guys were requesting so just stay tuned for that if you have any uh, product that I've used that you want my opinion on like my full review comment down below and we can have a discussion just like if there's a product that you wonder if I recommend it or if I used it and I really didn't like it so we can have a discussion down below about that if you're new here I would love for you to subscribe I do a ton of trying new makeup reviews hauls everything beauty that's what I do uh, so today I'm going to be using the new Melt Cosmetics Millennial Pinks palette. I just thought this looked so freaking pretty. So we're going to use this. Also the new Too Faced Turn Up the Light. These are the little um, like soft focus uh, trios. So you have like glow, soft focus, and then dazzle. So it's really kind of like a play on the hourglass ambient lighting palettes. New products from Lorac. This is the soft focus longwear foundation. This is brand new. Uh, and then the Pro Skin Glass Skin Primer. Both of these brand new. I also wanted to play with the Natasha Denona. Look at this packaging. Love Glow Cheek Palette. So I thought we could play with that. I have the Milk Makeup Vegan Moisturizer. For lips, I never know which way I'm gonna go. I have some products from Natasha Denona. I have new lipsticks from Smashbox. I have new Melt Glosses. It really just depends on how I'm feeling. I kind of do the whole face and then figure out the lips. Also have the Beauty Blender Bounce Airbrush Liquid Whip Concealer. I have a sample here, so we're gonna use that. And then I also have this Buxom mascara that's new let me tell you about this I have some thoughts so I have all of that and then I also do have this product that was sent to me it's called the crease crease piece it's a cut crease creation kit I'm nervous to try this but I do want to try it so I think we're just gonna play around with everything as we normally do I have made this intro way too long let's go ahead and begin all right so you're zoomed in now I want to start off with the milk makeup vegan milk moisturizer I used this last night I just got this this is what it looks like so it's really really thick I mean she thick you know what I mean so it doesn't have a fragrance no fragrance added I'm, I'm kind of I get confused. Fragrance free or no fragrance added are two different things, I think. Okay, so now that I'm reading it, it says it contains less than 1% of synthetic fragrances. So it's not completely fragrance free. When I do smell it, I don't smell much, so that's nice. This is supposed to be a really rich cream. I mean, it feels just nice and whipped. I did use this before bed last night just to try it out, uh, and I liked it. It felt really nice. So I'm just going to apply this pretty much as my moisturizer. I'm kind of in that weird limbo where I don't wanna break out, but my skin is dry. And so putting on really moisturizing products scares me because to me that means like breakouts could come. I just have to be careful. So this does feel very rich. I feel like there's a slight kind of tack to the skin, but nothing crazy so we'll see how it plays under makeup i just appreciate the fact that they didn't load it with fragrance i feel like that has really been kind of a trend and i'm hoping that we're veering away because i really feel like i hear a lot of people say like chill with the fragrance like there's not many people that are that are like yes put a ton of fragrance in my skincare so i'm not sure why companies do that because i feel like that actually detours people from buying it so next up these are brand new products from lorac i just got this in the mail this is called the pro skin glass skin primer they also have a matte one as well this is in a dropper and the component is heavy it's like a ceramic bottle so when you open it up, it has like a little dropper. So let's go ahead and just drop some out. It has a light scent, but I thought this said it was fragrance free again. It's confusing because I think fragrance free means that they didn't add fragrance or no, I, I'm not sure. There's, it's kind of like a weird, I don't want to say weird. I'm not educated enough on it because I thought no fragrance added so like if there's a light smell to this there might be a product in there whether it be like coconut water or some sort of like oil or something that's making it have a light smell they didn't add in like perfume essentially 
So this definitely is interesting. Uh, when I swatched this on my Instagram, I did say this. This feels like an oil, dry oil hybrid. Definitely has silicone in it, or it feels that way. Almost like a smoothing primer, but it, it's very thin and oily in texture. So now that I've prepped my skin, I wanna go in with their new foundation. This is the Pro Soft Focus Longwear Foundation. This packaging is really unique. It is definitely plastic, so better for travel. I have the shade 8 Medium, and you do get one ounce, which is like the typical amount. It does have a pump on it, and this is very liquidy. I have no idea what to expect in terms of coverage. I thought the uh, packet that it came with said buildable coverage, so it didn't say light, medium, or full, but you can see it's running down. So we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna use a brush on one side and then possibly uh, the Tati Blendiful on the other. Okay, so right off the bat, this is good coverage. I would say a medium coverage right off the bat. It is very liquidy, so just keep that in mind. I might just use a brush for the whole thing and then use the Tati for my concealer. I'm not noticing a scent or a strong scent. I wanna go in now with the Beauty Blender Bounce Airbrush Liquid Whip Concealer. So I have a sample here. I think I'm gonna go in with this light Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> this 1.4 neutral light. So this is supposed to be full coverage with a natural finish. So it has just this little sample pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this to my under eye. Oh, that might be too light. Hmm. So I'm actually gonna go in and try 3.25 medium neutral. I just feel like maybe the swatch, yeah, the swatches on the actual sample card looked darker than it is. So I'm just going to apply it under the eye. It's kind of difficult when you have just like a swatch. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use my Tati. I will say, I don't know if I would say this is a medium concealer. Does that look light to you guys? Even being medium? Hmm. So I would say when in doubt, like usually I wear like light concealers and that one looked so light. The fact that this medium still looks light to me, it's kind of interesting. It's definitely a whipped, like it feels thicker. It's not a thin formula. It's blending out nicely. I don't know if that shade is so light though it feels. So here's what it looks like. I have to be honest, I don't think I like that. I don't see full coverage. I'm not sure if you guys do, but I'm seeing a ton of like blue. I don't think my under eyes look good at all. Because I feel like this just looks too, it just looks light. I feel like I almost look sick. I don't think it had good coverage in my opinion. Wow, see, this is why I'm glad I got a sample. Now, of course, it's just my first impression, but I'm gonna go in with the Iconic London Seamless Concealer in Beige, just to like, tie this in because I just don't like that. And I feel like I don't wanna ruin my whole makeup. This is a very thin formula, good medium coverage, and this color's a little bit darker, so. So I feel like that looks a lot better. I don't know if the shade was just off, but that was not, I didn't like that. So my first impression on that was not great. I'm gonna go in with the Huda Beauty Pound Cake just to set my T-zone, and then I wanna try out this Too Faced Soft Focus Powder. So to set the rest of my face, I'm gonna go in with this Turn Up the Light, and this is from Too Faced. So this is a shade medium. So you have a Soft Focus Powder in the center that's supposed to be kinda like the Hourglass Ambient very soft, like a glow, but not, it's like an all over setting powder. Then you have glow, so let me just swatch these for you. And then you have dazzle, which is a little chunkier, a little bit more highlighty. So here's glow, which is like a typical highlight, and then in the middle is soft focus, and then you have that kind of dazzle. So we will see how this plays out. Usually anything that's like soft focus, I don't like because I have texture and I don't want to enhance it. So I'm going to keep this away from my T-zone and just kind of set the perimeter of my face. So I'm just using a fluffy brush. The formula feels and looks kind of like a baked formula. So... So 
So my first impression on that is that I don't really see much of a glow, maybe a tiny bit. It didn't enhance my texture, which is good. I'm most intrigued by this glow, just because this really is, I mean, it's nice and reflective, feels creamy, like really, um, it's not dry, is what I'm trying to say. The middle one doesn't feel dry either, but this one feels kind of dry and chunky, so I'm most interested to try the glow shade. All right, brows are on. I'm really nervous because I wanna use this product called the Crease Piece. So this is the inner packaging. So this is a cut crease tool, and it has different shapes, like three different shapes, and then you have one for each eye. So I'm gonna attempt to use it with the Melt Palette. So I have to get it kind of set up here. So this is what the little tool looks like. So the idea is that you stick on the attachments and then you hold it here and you do your eyeshadow. So it's a, basically like an easy cut crease tool for people that aren't good at cut creases. I'm not the best, so I am really interested to try it out. Okay, so here's what the attachment looks like. And it says like wing R, which is the right side. And then if you flip it over, it has an adhesive strip so that I applied it on to the actual what is it, like the wand? So this is the left side, so you apply it like this. It's kind of confusing, but when you do buy this, or this was sent to me, but it comes with a kit with like a paper and all of that to explain what to do. So essentially what you're gonna do is hold it to your eye like this and then put your shadow on, if that makes sense. So we're gonna try it. They do say to start with the deeper shadow and a smaller brush, and then use a more fluffy brush with a lighter shadow above it. So to do this, I'm gonna use the new Melt Palette. This palette is so freaking pretty. Like, it's just unreal how pretty it is. So here are the shades. I'm gonna start off with this shade right here. So I'm gonna use this little ColourPop brush from their set, and we're just going to try this out. I'm like so nervous, I'm not sure why. I've never done this shape. I've seen so many people do it, but I just never felt like I was good at it. I don't know if it's like my eye shape or what. So I guess you could just kind of place it higher up or lower. We're just going to go for it. So you just hold it here and then just blend your shadow. This feels so awkward, but I mean, if it works. I'm taking a more concentrated brush because I really want to make sure that I am Doing this right. Okay, moment of truth. So I feel like I got a little bit under here, but I can clean that up. So I have a general shape. I feel like I've just never seen this on me, but we're gonna keep trying it out. I'm gonna add some more just because I wonder if I just need a little bit more right here. Okay, we're gonna keep going. I know it looks crazy. I wanna go in next with Flamingo Dream just to blend above that shade. So I'm just gonna use this to blend above. All right, so this is what it looks like. I definitely feel like there's a learning curve, but it's my first time using it. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of concealer and try to clean up underneath. So I think I wanna keep it really simple for the lid. I'm actually gonna go into pink leather because it's just the matte and I've never done this kind of shape. And I'm gonna do a wing. I just really wanted to test out this crease piece. It looks more like peachy kind of cream in the palette, but it's coming off like more pink which is nice. Sometimes I feel like matte looks are underrated. I feel like we always have this thought that we need to do a really like metallic lid and some of my favorite looks just are all matte. 
So I am going to go off camera and do a wing just so I don't mess it up and then we will kind of see where we wanna go from there. So I did my winged liner off camera. I'm gonna go in with the Buxom Mascara. This is their new Extrovert and this mascara is phenomenal. I really like it. I've used it a few times off camera. It's gonna be hard to see because I have these big ol' wings on but I have been loving this mascara. There's been quite a few new mascaras that have really wowed me, but I mean the fact that you can see my lashes with this big wing on, this is a really nice mascara. Okay, so I went ahead and applied a bronzer because I don't have a new one, and then I also did these Flutter Lashes in Lovable. These are the double lift, so I'll link them down below, but I wanna get in to the Natasha Denona Love Face Palette. So I watched Natasha use this on her IG stories, so I'm gonna go in with the base. This is the first product she uses, and she uses a sponge, and she says to tap the product on and don't drag it. So I got some on my sponge. I'm actually gonna tap some on the back of my hand. I just wanna make sure that I'm not using too much and we're going to tap this on. She kind of does it as like a blush highlight hybrid. Okay, I can see it there. So she kind of applies it like all around here. Okay, that actually did give me a really beautiful kind of, I don't know, pinky blush glow. It didn't disrupt my foundation. So now I'm gonna go into the Super Glow. This is what she recommends to go in with second. And she uses a blush brush. Okay, that picked up a lot of product. I also see her kind of like wiping it on the back of her hand as well. And she just kind of goes up. Did she go up? Maybe she went down. Either way, she applies it, you know, you don't want to apply it right here, I don't think. I mean, you probably could, but she kind of applies it like a highlighter. So the placement of all these products is a lot different than like a typical blush, but you can see I look like I have applied blush. So next she goes into the highlighter, which is called the Glow Impact Powder, and she uses her finger. So I'm just gonna use all of these. She does say that you don't have to use all of these, but I'm just doing it for the purpose of trying it. So she just uses her finger. Wow. Okay, and she just like applies it on the top of the cheekbones. Cupid's bow. And then she also does take a brush to apply on the bridge of the nose and the tip. So this would be just kind of like a typical highlighter. I have to say, I'm pretty shocked because I thought like, just having texture, I was like, ugh, you know, four shimmery blushes or highlighters, but it is looking nice on the skin. Okay, and then lastly, she goes into the diamond powder, which is the pink. And I mean, it's like really reflective and she just applies it on top. Now this one, oh wow. Okay, so it's definitely intense, but it's a little bit like glittery. So just keep that in mind. She applies it to the brow bone, but I really don't want to do that because I don't really have much brow bone showing because of the look I did today. Wow. I'm shocked. I really thought like this was gonna be not very functional, but it is beautiful. Even me having texture, because you're not putting it on your actual T-zone, it's beautiful. So I wanna finish off my eyes. I'm gonna go back into the Melt Cosmetics palette, and I wanna go into the shade Modern Love again. And I'm just going to smoke this on the lower lash line. This is gonna be pretty natural in here. The one thing I would have liked to see in this palette would have been one dark, dark, like burgundy shade instead of maybe like the black or the navy one dark shade because this is like the darkest pink shade you have unless you want to go for that kind of gray navy or the black and i don't really want to do that because i want to keep it pink 
So that would have been helpful, but of course I could just get something else out of my collection. And then I'm gonna go back into Flamingo Dream and I'm gonna use this with a fluffier brush to soften that and just kind of blow it out. And then I wanna take the shade Pink Noise and apply this to the inner corner. Wow, that is beautiful. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna try this for the waterline. This is ColourPop Cream Gel Liner in Joyride. I'm hoping this isn't gonna be like too dark or kind of darken the look. So I think I want a little bit more depth. I think I'm going to mix this shade right here with a literally a pinch of the black to see if I can just like deepen it a little bit right here. So for lips, I'm gonna line with KKW Nude 1.5. So I have these new lipsticks from Smashbox. I'm gonna try this one called Just Barely. They're really creamy. Like insanely creamy. And then I really wanna try out this Melt Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Sucker. So this is supposed to give like a pink reflect. Oh yeah. These smell good too, like cake. When you swatch these, uh, like just on your hand, there's not much color. They really come to life over a lipstick. Ooh, that's pretty. All right guys, so here's my finished makeup look and I wanna go over each product, starting out with the Milk Makeup Cleanser. I do like this. I like that it's not scented. It's very hydrating. It did sit nicely under my makeup, so I feel like I could use it at night or before makeup. The consistency is a really thick gel and I just like that it's not irritating, but it's also not greasy feeling. It is definitely super hydrating, so if you're oily, you might not like this one, but I have high hopes for this. In terms of the Lorac Pro Skin Glass Skin Primer, I don't know about this. This is an interesting product. Again, I don't know because I did use it with their foundation, so I'm going to have to keep playing around with it. It feels really hydrating, though, and it's not quite an oil, but it's not quite a silicone primer. It's like a hybrid. So interested to keep trying this, but my thoughts are good on it so far. The Lorac Pro Soft Focus Foundation. Coverage was great, really easy to apply. Again, gonna have to see how it wears. I'll leave a pinned comment. I always say that and then I freaking forget, but I really will leave a pinned comment and tell you guys how it wears, but it looks pretty good to me. I don't know if it's like my favorite ever, but it's not bad. Like I, I don't feel like, oh, I wanna take it off. It just, I don't know, it looks nice to me so far, so we'll see how it wears. The Beauty Blender uh, concealer is a no for me. I don't know if it was just the shade, but honestly, I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't think it had much coverage. Lately, I've been kind of having some issues with some products, and I'm like, maybe it's me, but really just not that impressed with it. The Too Faced uh, Turn Up the Light, I didn't get to use the highlighter because I forgot that the Natasha Denona kind of had like so much glow that it was like, I can't use this as well. Uh, the Soft Focus Powder, I don't know what to say. Um, didn't do much, didn't hate it, didn't love it. So for me, I'm really most excited to try this glow and we will try this in another video. But so far my thoughts on this are kind of like, I can't really judge it off the one product, but I didn't notice much with it. The crease piece is something that's really unique and I think it's a really cool concept. I'm not used to seeing this shape on my eyes. So for me, it's a little bit like, ooh, did I do that right? Again, it's my first time using it. I still think there's a learning curve. I think it's a good map. It really helps you map it out and then you can use concealer to clean up. It could 
could be just because it's my first time using it, but there's two other shapes. So I'll keep playing around with this. I really, really love the aesthetic of this Melt palette. Now, of course, I only used three shades in here, so I'll have to keep trying them out. But these shades I would use, like this is like a total Babs shade. I love this. This would be something I would use in my crease and be done for the day. Maybe put a little bit of this in the outer corner. So I love these shades. I think they're beautiful. I really do want to do like a darker look with these dark navies and the silver. So we'll keep playing with this, but first impression on this is good. Really, really, really love this melt gloss. I feel like they looked sheer and I thought like, is that even going to show up? But when you see them applied on top of a lipstick, you really see that pink come through. Smells really nice, like cake or something like that. Standout product for me today that I honestly didn't know if I was going to like because I have texture. I thought, is this going to enhance my texture? And anything like that really kind of turns me off. This is stunning. This Natasha Denona Glow Palette. If you are kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of shimmers, watch her IGTV on her Instagram because that's how I really like followed it to apply the products. The cream base, I don't know, it's interesting. It went over my powder just fine. It is a hybrid. It's almost like a blush, but it has a glow. This is beautiful. If you love like a pink glowy cheek, I could just see this like on vacation or the springtime. I am impressed with this. Also really like these Smashbox lipsticks. They are so creamy. Even when I swatched them yesterday, I was like, wow. Just so incredibly creamy. So I'm excited to play with more colors. The Fenty Beauty Spray, I like it. I'm not like dying over it, but I like it. I don't notice that it makes me super dewy. The mister on here is incredible, but the scent is not my favorite. I like it and I'll use it, but I prefer my Farsali or the Watermelon uh, Glow Recipe. And then I think that's it. I love the Buxom Mascara as well. So really, we had a good trying new makeup day. I'm gonna keep playing around with these products. I wanna know your thoughts down below. What do you think of everything that I applied? Would you use that creased piece? Do you think you're gonna pick up the Natasha Denona. I'm sure a lot of you already have and you're probably like, you're late. I was late. I was just not filming a ton. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I have a ton of new products coming and another trying new makeup and I have a Sephora haul coming. So stay tuned. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.